Boule Kev here with the legendary Scott Storch, man who needs no introduction. Um, your new single just came out. Yes, sir. I don't want to fuck up the pron pronunciation. Fuego, Fuego del Calor. Which pretty much just means like hot fire, right? Yeah. That hot fire. Why? I'm curious because I think ever since you announced you were going to be doing like a project, super excited to hear what you, I know you're sitting you. on some huge records. Yeah, man. Um, you know, we're not that far along the product, I mean, the project. Uh, but we were we I got like four or five solid songs that I really want to use for the project but we're just getting going on it but you know we wanted to you know put out a single and and do something like the first time that was like super global and and you know had had potential to hit many markets and just do something yeah, I was gonna like, ask you like why like like Scott Storch don't we don't we don't necessarily associate you with the Spanish shit. Come on, man. You know about that Daddy Yankee impacto. Oh shit, that's real. Yeah. But I just mean like, I just mean like overall, like you know what I'm saying? Like, no, yeah, you, no. you know. I mean, I just, I, for me, pioneering and just trying new stuff and even new stuff for me is fun. You know what I mean? It makes it like, I don't like getting burnt out on doing like what you'd expect from me. So it still has that melody and production value and that you know. I'm known for, and it's doing something that I feel like, I don't know. Something hey, listen, man. You're one of the most prolific producers of all time, so I think you can do whatever the fuck you want right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I want to go back, bro, because like, we were just having this discussion about The Roots, and I'm like, a I, I, first time I ever saw The Roots, I was probably 13, and this was like 2002 or some shit. Okay. And this was after you had probably... Stopped working with them like on a more yeah, regular the, basis. Yeah, I went to the production route. But I remember like buying the bootleg of Organics, which was like the first Roots album, but it wasn't like their first I mean, major yeah. album. No, yeah, that was Do You Want More. Do You Want More was their official yeah, debut. But we did Organics. We recorded the whole album in one day. Wow. Yeah, I'm saying we recorded the whole album in one day. Was that out of nece necessity? Because back then, studio time was expensive, and it well, was well, yeah. But then at the same time, yeah, we wanted to, you know, make it economical. We had a limited budget, but we were a live band. We were used to playing these songs live, and we were able to all set up at the same time, record to a click or a cowbell or whatever we were recording to, right? And the band would start the song. And we would cut the motherfucker from beginning to end. I'm curious. It's totally different. Like back then, like being around that early '90s Philly hip hop energy, like especially the Roots. Like, did you feel? Because at the time, there was no precedent for that much live instrumentation in hip hop, or let alone a band in hip hop. Yeah. Was was did it feel like as special as like now? We obviously the Roots are, you know. One of the greatest rap groups of all time. But back then, as a kid, did you realize like what you were a part of? Yeah, no, I mean, I knew we were on something special. You know, like there was a couple of things that sort of resembled what we were doing at that time, but it wasn't what we were doing. Like, I mean, like the Diggable Planet. Yeah, yeah, of course. Different things, like, but but they were they were rapping over samples. Yeah. There was another group in Philly called the Goats at the time, but that was like a college band, but it was like hip hop, like you know, right. The roots were special, and you know, I, I knew it was gonna uh, have a long lifespan. But I just, as much as I loved being a part of it, I wanted so much more to be a record producer and stay in the studio. I'm the kind of person that likes to like wake up in my house every day, and I'm not a big fan of going on the road, and um, just chose a different life. Yeah. So, obviously, you win your first Grammy with the Roots, which was, I mean. I love. By the way, shout out to everybody who watched your versus battle. Oh, where is that? That shit was legendary. It was. It was. It was. It got ugly. That's all I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, like, at what point in time after you pivoted away from working with them full time, like, what was that? Um, that first big look for Scott Storch, as Scott Storch the brand, like, as 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 a solo guy who decided to break away from this Roots crew, like, what was that first? thing that happened where you're like oh shit like I, I think this can actually work like I, I like me as a record producer can actually be a thing um I went with us this dude uh the guy that actually 
got the the record deal for the Roots, Derek Jackson. Um, you know, he brought it to Wendy Goldstein, et cetera, et cetera. But you know, after I left, I ended up getting in contact with this guy, and he was took me to New York from Philly, and we did a run all the way around the city, and um, went from label to label, this that the other couple of you know we, I was hoping to just cut a record while I was in New York like that's all I wanted right and sh I, one guy came through for me my first client who was it Buster Rhymes Buster and we made a song called blood out okay and it, it went on the uh, it was, what is it Astro strikes huh it was anarchy or anarchy yeah yeah it was yep. an anarchy album and um then I set up a gig to come back the following week and work with uh, Capone and Noriega. CNN. Yeah. And Capone, the day that I was going to the studio to meet, he literally was getting brought from prison to the studio. So this was like his first studio yeah. stop after yeah. getting out. Yeah. Did you end up on? Did you end up having production on War Report or any? Or what? Did you? Did you? I forget. I mean, yeah, I think. That's I mean, crazy, man. So yeah. Capone and Noriega. It's crazy because Nori also had a lot to do with Pharrell starting. With Super Thug, yeah, that's that's kind of interesting to yeah. to know. But but um, obviously you're the you're known as the piano man. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you, once like you, because I feel like there's a Scott Storch sound, and a lot of people say that you know you like like. But when it comes to the keys, and 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 the way you played them, bro, like I. In the early two thousands, I just feel like you had a signature sound. You, I mean, I, I think you still do, but, but, yeah. But you know what? Like a lot of that sound, it, it's it's a uh, part of the evolution of what hip hop became. Yeah, and you know we have to leave it there, and go for new stuff and innovate, because, you know, people you don't want people to be like, oh, that's what he was doing back then. Like we want some new shit, like. You've yeah. done a great job of pivoting recently because um, I feel like you kind of had to like kind of prove to everybody like you're, you're back over the last four I mean, or five years. I mean, I had to get back because, you know, I left music to go off and do the debauchery and shit that I, I did when I wasn't making music, doing drugs and all that right. stuff, and come back, flash forward a decade later, and you, now you're trying to like, you know, you have to reevaluate where is music now and, like, you know, relearn it. I mean, not the musicianship part, but the production, the sonics, and, you know, the way, you know, the simplicity of things. And, you know, like, I had to relearn it. And yeah, no, I feel like you, 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 you kind of did something that's so hard to do because if you think it's super hard. If you do, if you think of the, a lot of the producers that were popping back then, like a lot of those guys aren't around anymore. There's a few. There's like Timbaland. There's Dre. There's yourself. But like, the fact that you're able to tap in with Trippy Red, yeah, and tap in with well, we we used to have a specific way of looking at music as a whole, as a you know producer or musician, and once you think you know the right way to make it, you're done because there is no right. Because you're way. not willing to. Evolve. There's no right way to make music. It's always evolving and changing. So you have to like constantly reinvent yourself, and it's also well, you're stuck. It's in subjective. A Music is subjective. Yeah. yeah, the people that can just keep going and and evolving it—that's you know, that's the thing. It's rare. Um, in I always wanted to ask you this. I remember you did clap back for Ja Rule, right? <laughs> yeah, which was a fire ass record. But at that time, nobody was fucking with Ja Rule. It was kind of that weird part of his career where Fifty they had the beef and people kind of chose sides. When you ended up working with Fifty on the massacre, did was that like a conversation? Like, like you did lean back, obviously. Yeah, I was. And like, Fifty seemed like the I kind didn't of guy. Give a shit, and like, I know like, you I didn't made care. that clear to everybody. I am not on some rap beef shit. But I'm at the time, he was. And I'm trying to eat. Like I was a starving art. You know, you could have mad records out, still hadn't made no money. So, motherfuckers was working, and like you know, I leave those beefs to other people. But like. A lot of times, I would find myself um, doing records, you know, for people, and like, I would get, like, that clapback is an example. Like, it wasn't supposed to go to him, like that. That beat, beat was so fire. That beat, I made 
in my house the day before I was going to New York. I was going to New York to work with, with um, Janet Jackson at Wyclef Studio. I remember this clear as a bell. And that day before, Petey Crack and Beanie Siegel Stay came proud. to my house in Florida. I made that beat. And I guess, um, you know, just it never happened. Like they just were asleep in the studio. It wasn't, you know, whatever. So, so that was meant for a so I left the next day to New York. And I got the call from Rule, like, yo, I need something. I was like, all right, give him this beat. And it was like a two track. And it never got, that song never got mixed. Wow. Yeah, like the music of it was just given like a two track on like a dad tape, like from the crib. So I remember they EQ'd it or whatever, but. That's crazy. Weird how like records end up. That It's funny because I think that's one of like, obviously it wasn't like the biggest hit in the world, but that beat was so hard, man. It could. I used to cringe in the club when I would hear it, because it was like, oh my god, it sounds so thin compared to all. Because you knew it shit. wasn't mastered. Yeah, it wasn't mixed, it wasn't mastered. I'm like, dude, you're making me look bad. <laughs> Yo, so another, you know, when we when we watched the battle, shout out to everybody who watched the versus battle with you and uh, Manny Fresh. The Dr. Dre records, I think, are kind of like had to be like one of like the turning crowning moments of your career like talk about like obviously being a part of chronic 2001 which was a very very interesting time in hip-hop because i remember that album being teased for so long <coughs> and i remember death row cock blocking and putting out an album called chronic, the chronic 2000, 2000 yeah and it had so we like, had to make it chronic 2001 right because it came out and like i remember i was like dude like that doesn't make sense but i remember that weird ass death row album it had like a cigar on the yep cover. it had the cigar on the cover and then the guy who sounded Speaking just of... like snoop dogg there was a guy on that album that was like a snoop impersonator i swear to god suge was petty but nonetheless like that album was it's one of the top 10 greatest hip-hop albums of all time um, can you talk about like how did that initial connection happen with Dre? I think you've spoken a lot about like the process of making those records, but like you getting into the fold with Dre, becoming a part of that team that worked on that project. Okay, so there was obviously the moment where I left the roots. And I was trying to make a career for myself. What year did you officially individual. like break away? Uh, ninety five. Okay. Yeah, I left the group. I actually ended up in ninety seven, getting a visit from them when I was in the middle of working on a song. But but that's a whole other story. And I gave them more records. Yeah. But at this point, I'm trying to make uh, a life for myself as a producer, and you know I was struggling, so. The Roots had a um, like an um, open mic women in music series that they used to do every Sunday at the Wetlands okay. in, in New York. And every Sunday for a year I would do this. I was part of the house band. It was me, Quest Love, you know, a couple other cats. And then like... Crazy. I mean, all everybody was there. Common was always there. You know, Erica Badu was there. Crazy. Joe Scott. I mean, mm -hmm. it was a movie. It went, went on every Sunday. So finally, after a year of doing that, they did one in California at the Martini Lounge. Okay. <coughs> so, um, I see this girl when I go out to the Martini Lounge, my first time ever in, in California. Right. I've never been to Cali. And this girl from Philly comes up to me that I knew, a rapper that I'd worked with or whatever, and um, it was Eve. Shout out to Eve. And Eve was like, yo, I got... I got a, um, I got a record deal with Dr. Dre. This is prior to her going to Rough Riders. Rough Riders, Riders before we like really knew Eve. Yeah, she was like way before. She wasn't like upstream or downstream. She was side streamed. I guess you know Dre was so busy with M, and mm -hmm. uh, you know he was busy. Yeah, Dre had that weird era where he put out that Aftermath album with the bomb on the cover, and it was like more like a compilation album. Yeah, this was era after that. This yeah. After okay. That. Okay. 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 So yeah, we've been there, done that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. That record. Yep. Yeah. So. So um, I'm, I'm like out there, like I'm literally at this moment in my life, probably two months behind in my rent and like struggling, whatever. And she's like, come meet Dr. Dre. Probably like 98, 99, it's probably 98. 90, it's 99. Okay, 99. She's beginning of 99. Or yeah, maybe it was 98. I think it was 98. Um, at any rate, 
she says, come meet Dr. Dre and, you know, play him some music. I was like, I don't have any music with me. She said, well, come play the piano for him. Because I didn't have any that tapes right, 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 or right. CDs. And um, I played, I sat in the lobby and waited for a few hours. And, you know, I, I, he's like, all right, here you hot on them keys. So I played some shit. He was like, bet. He was like, don't go anywhere. Got a hotel room key, a fucking stack of money, like everything. It's like, fuck with us. We were making this album. And uh, it was just like the vibe of like this different like style, I guess, that he was used to hearing in, you know, California musicians that he would bring in different keyboard players. Yeah. yeah. And it was something completely different and East Coast, but still like universal about it. And he was fucking with it. So he put me on the team, bro. It was, it was an honor. I learned everything there. That's it where I learned to really understand music production. And how long was that era of your career where you were in there learning? Like with Dre? Yeah, like how long did that last? Like four or five years of like And so you're just solid. soaking up like everything. Like because he's so meticulous. I hear he's yeah, crazy yeah. about incredible Sonic. standards. Like you said you hated hearing J the Ja Rule song in the club because you could tell the difference of yeah. that. Like that's yeah. probably you probably got that from being around Jerry so long. For sure. Um it's insane to think like I feel like like still DRE, like low key, like the fact that you're a kid from Philly and kind of shaped like West Coast Sonics for like the next like eight or nine years. Because if you go and like listen to like games, documentary, like I just feel like that those keys are they're they're West Coast now. Like it's like you know what I'm saying. Like there's records that you hear that are like we kind of you know I can't take credit for like I mean Dre's production is I mean I'm mean, obviously yeah yeah like I brought to the table. I slowly like the Chronic 2000. I brought. A certain, it was more, I mean, it was production, but it was like, I even more like want to call it writing. Like we were writing these things and this and that. And, you know, he was, you know, he definitely had a vision for what he was doing, but I brought to a new sound that was different, like than the, you know, G-Funk. Exactly. Thing going on. It was more orchestral and it was like pianos and, you know, something totally new. Did you, because at the time, Dre had so many artists that, <coughs> I mean, damn, I would have loved to have heard what a Rock Him album would have sounded like under Aftermath. We were around for some of that. Did like, you? We, I was going to ask you, did, did you yeah, work on the un-released yeah. un, uh, Rock Him album? Yeah. How, yeah, how was did. that? How did that I sound? I even had Rock Him come meet me in Miami one time and work with me. Now, is this like and peak? If I remember correctly, he is, doesn't fly. He had to like drive out there. Actually, is this like peak, like storage, like Miami time? Yeah, but the, I, yeah, no, but I mean, we I worked with him with Dre, mm -hmm. at, like right in L.A., and then I worked with him later in uh, in, in Miami, randomly. There has to be like legend. A, talk about like that the the Rock Kim music that you heard while he was under Aftermath because we never got to hear any of it. I mean, some of the shit was pretty dope. I can't front. It was it was pure unadulterated. Him, he's he's this kind of rapper that like once he opens his voice, you, he's got a tone and a particular style. Grabs and your potent. attention, man. Dmx, one of those yep. people. I'm looking at right now. <laughs> so, oh yeah, shout out to the belly poster in the room. Legendary. Uh, yeah, no, that's I I, I always like there, you know even like hit man. There was I just felt like there were so many fire artists under Aftermath that Devin you know, the dude. Did he sign to Aftermath? No, I mean I'm just saying on that album. Oh man, Devin's one of my favorites. Shout out Rap a Lot dude, Records. Dude, he he was he, he definitely did his thing on that album. Facts. And you know, I, I I miss it so much, but I used to all the time after you know being in that crew, be able to call my brother Nate Dog for hooks, for songs, and you just you knew you was gonna get a hit. You know, you're like, yo, get Nate, get Nate. You and you and Nate's relationship very strong. Rest in peace. Yeah, we were cool. That's we crazy. Cool. Yeah, because I like, what was the the he was on a wasn't he on a Kiss record that you did? We did the um, I, uh, yeah he was. But there was a record that I really liked. Um, Dub C and him. The, the streets. streets. Def Jam. Yeah. Ghetto Heisman was the name of that album. Yeah. Yo, Dub C, one of my, my my favorite West Coast rappers ever. Doesn't get enough respect. No, there's a lot of My guys. favorite of the three in West Side Connection, for the record. <laughs> Shout out to Ice Cube and Mac Tan. But, um, yeah, man, like, and then obviously, man, like, I always tell this to, 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 to shout out to Steve Lobel. Steve um, Lobel, we working. We working. The legend. But I always am like, yo, man, whenever your Netflix 
mini documentary series or movie or whatever. Your, your life story, fam, is the Wolf of Wall Street of music, dog. Oh, yeah. But like, we gotta get Steve LaBelle to play a cop in the movie. Oh, he's gotta play. He's he, gonna arrest he, me. No, he's like gotta that. play himself. Or I want to know who plays Steve at the end of the movie when, when during your comeback. I'll get Bruce Willis. Oh my God, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> Uh, that's great, but now I mean Vin Diesel. You 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 obviously, it's well documented. By the way, I thought it was very corny, the skits during that battle that Manny for. I thought that was the corniest shit ever, but I digress. Um, if you can't dazzle them with genius, baffle them with bullshit. Shout out to Six and Nine. Uh, nonetheless. That era of your life that got out of control, right? So there's a point in time where you're clearly the, the biggest producer. I mean, at, at your peak, like, what was the Scott Storch beat costing? It was like just a little soft 80 racks. That's crazy. Was there ever a, an era in hip hop where people were getting like 250 a beat? Or is that just. Yeah, I think we've had these situations. Me and, me and Timberland, we split a million dollars for a beat. Really? The hell yeah. Damn. Which beat was that? Huh? Which, it was for a commercial. A commercial? Yeah. For what company? Uh, and one. And one shoes drop a million. <laughs> Shit, that's crazy. Yeah. You know he was commanding some crazy money. Like I was just coming up. He was already there, like chilling. I was Man. so I was like, God damn. But in that era, I just feel like you were one of those guys. Hmm? Like you were like one of those guys. It's like yo, if you get a Scott Storch beat, like you're fucking out of here. Yeah, and I was giving everybody their money's worth until the, the the habits came in, and then it was just like. Now, was there ever any? Because I think there's always like speculation that back then, certain female artists would sleep with producers to get beats. Did that ever happen? No. To get beats? Yeah, or like to get a discount, or like. No, I mean, I was, they was playing eighty thousand, and, and they was paying eighty thousand. It was smashed. still coming out of their. It was still was, coming out of their budget. Was, yeah, they were still <laughs> coming out of their thing. You still got to recoup this animal <laughs> fuck. That's crazy. Nah, but like, what do you remember the year that shit started to kind of get a, a little hazy and out of control? Like, where it was like, fuck, man, this is the this was kind of the beginning of the end because I, I, originally you weren't a big club guy, right? No, I wasn't. I was stuck in the studio. And then, like somewhere just after I turned thirty, I, um, I think I, I went a little cuckoo, and I started getting into, you know, the nightlife, the paparazzi's, and this and excessive shit. And then, like, cocaine came into the play, and and you know, Jack Daniels and lots of pussy. And Man, part I can talk. I can, you can say whatever the fuck you want, buddy. Um, yeah, lots of pussy, and I was going crazy. And I stopped working. The work just, I just like, psh, I got so much money, work, I don't need work to Work became shit. secondary. I thought I was invincible. And then, so are we, what, 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 what do we, what do we call in this? Like 06, 07? We're calling this 07 leaning into 08 more. More like 08. So that was kind of the beginning of shit getting that was, crazy. Yeah, that was, yeah. Yeah. That's wild, man. And then. That's when, yeah. Yo, it's, I mean, you brought Bugattis it up. and all that shit Bro, started coming. I just know shit. you have the most legendary uh, hit list in hip hop. If it ever, if it ever came out, <laughs> we didn't have Instagram, bro. I'm hearing the I, victims were, you know, child. You saw my fat Joe interview. You reposted it. Yeah. Fat Joe's like, he fucked all of them. <laughs> all of them. If whoever you're Thanks. thinking of in your head Thanks, right Joe, now, <laughs> for reminding me and, uh, and my boy, I remember my, my, my girl. Shout out my guy DJ Chris John from Tampa, Fat Joe's old DJ. But Chris John was like, "Fam, Scott Storch's house. He was coming down the stairs with this bitch on this and this bitch on the other, and and here and thumbs yeah, and thumbs up the ass, yeah, yeah. thumbs up the ass of, of them. And and we're talking about um, creme de la creme is what we'll say. Yeah, man." Prior to them being that, uh, but we're in a new chapter. Yeah. In life. Now, now you. By the way, congratulations yeah. having a. You, you just had a, a, a new baby. Yeah. So congrats. But you know what? That passed. Um. I'm like, you know, I feel like I'm happy right now because I did all that shit. Yeah, you got it and out. I your got system. it out of my system, and I'm like, I'm cool. I'm content. I'm not sweating. No, you know, going to the club and trying to find pussy. Like I just did so much of that. Like I'm. 
I'm in the same. I'm in the same same vibe of my life. I like waking up early and hanging out with my nine month old baby, bro. Watching movies, chilling with the lady. Yeah, once you get that shit out of your system, the thing is, you didn't start till you were thirty. So you got you like got to like you had to make up for your twenties of missing out on all that. No, I was always a fucking monster in that department. But I'm with the women. Yeah, but just like it was a different thing. It wasn't like, and I don't know. How many women have you had at the same time at, at the most at once? I can imagine some of those parties had to end up with your bedroom just being lit as fuck. And you and you being the Just o- wait for the movie. The movie. Just wait for the movie. Are we talking like a, a yeah. starting five? Like huh? are we talking like a, a five pack? You know what? I can say this and I like to say this. Through that whole era of me being with a lot, of, you know, promiscuous or whatever, I always treated everybody with respect and we all everybody always had a great time. There was never any funky shit going on in my my circle. So you know, it was cool. You know what I think is dope is your relationship with Fat Joe because Fat Joe is, is one of those guys who um, I feel like never wavered in his friendship with you. If that makes sense? Yeah, no. He always remained loyal to me. Because I feel like a lot of people... Chris Brown as well. I just feel like a lot of people like kind of wrote you off, man. And like I think a I lot of times... Deservingly so. I but, was but I think fucking a, out of my mind. I mean, fair enough. But I think a lot of times like in our industry... Like once you can't do something for somebody, like you almost like get the ignore on them. You know what I'm saying? Like, like did you? A lot of those people who maybe a lot of the people that really cared for me wanted to believe, time and time again. You know, they wanted to believe, so they would you know tolerate it. With you know, we you know we just after a while you just figure it out. Like it, you know you can't nobody can force you to. To get your act together, you have to do it. You just have to get it together. And, and then I want you to talk about the project you have, the Heavenly Center, which I think is a great approach because I grew up around, you know, my, my family being big, big uh, drug addicts. And um, I think the 12 step program is a little dated. Hell yeah, that shit's prehistoric. It's prehistoric and it's kind of like faith based. You know, it's kind of yeah. like, you know, and I think that, you know, like kind of, from what I understand, the Heavenly Center is a cannabis centric, like a place to try to help people get off certain drugs by by using cannabis, correct? Yeah, not just. I mean, we allow the cannabis, and we'll educate you about the cannabis, and like try and um, evaluate you and see what cannabis works the best for you and how much of it milligrams. Because it's wise. really it's really helpful to get it's people indiv- off opiates, everybody right? Everybody individual, yeah, I mean, really helpful. And for me, it worked to get off of cocaine and like. You know, I'm living proof of that shit. You, you know, people have anxiety mm-hmm. when they when they're recovering from hard substances. Cannabis helps with that and gets you through that. And people, you start enjoying the way you feel, and it's not like a negative thing. Like whereas, like some of these drugs, the the high that comes from that destroys your life. It's not the case with cannabis. So people want to feel like they have something that they can relax. And you know, just and it's a also a it's an anti-inflammatory. So like, I think a hard like we talk about people who get fucked up on perks and shit and heroin. Getting off the getting off means those withdrawals, and if you could just dab yourself physical to sleep, addiction, yeah, you're you know it, it it helps, man. So the Heavenly Center's opening up when it, July first, July first, and it's in L.A. It's in Studio City, Studio City. So it's in the Valley, <coughs> um, THC. The Heavenly Center. The Heavenly... I like that. Come on, man. That's fire. So is that something that... um, Like, what... Like, obviously, we know you're on this, like, comeback trail, and we know you're, you're, you're lowest of your lows. Was What was the inspiration of saying, like, you know what, I want to try to help people? Yeah, that was definitely part of it. And, you know, conversations with, obviously, with Steve LaBelle, and, you know, he's always helping me, you know, guide me in the Not right Steve. direction. Not Steve. <laughs> trying to you know to uh expand on what of course we do. of course it's not always about like making a beat like there's so much more we can do like you know dude you we wouldn't have yeezys if kanye west just sat and made beats and made all beats day. all the time we, we we wouldn't even have him rapping he would still be just producing yeah facts mm-hmm. um your 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 last five four or five years we touched on that a little bit but we're talking down below from Roddy Rich, we're talking Russ. We're, I mean, 
trippy. Even like the stuff you did with Six Nine, you know, crazy, right? Like, wh who is the the one artist that is a new school artist that you feel like you have an insane chemistry with? Like that, it's just like Russ for sure. I was gonna say we it's got to not failed yet. We've made I don't know we've released how many songs with him so far? Five, five. More than that. And Russ is the kind I of think guy. Like six or seven. Every what? time we would go in the studio, we worked six or seven. Whatever the number of records that's out mm -hmm. is the number of records we did. And like they all time, go out. They, yeah, one. Yeah. That's wild. And then like it's crazy because I I know that like he kind of prides himself on self production on, but I remember seeing in an interview he was like, "Yo, the one guy I wanted to get in with was Scott Storch." Yeah, he was saying I think Dr. Dre, me, and Timberland were his top three, like. Like getting like letting like letting somebody like into this creative process like it's got to be an honor, man. It felt good, like you know when people like you know it it gets you inspired when you feel, you know people are feeling what you're doing and it's like because they don't know what to expect after you know when they're gonna come into the studio with you. Like I remember Russ was even saying he was like, man, it's one thing to get an opportunity to come in and work with Scott Storch and da 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 da, but he's like, and then for it to be dope. That's the that's that's, that's, that's the icing that's on the cake, a hundred percent, man. Um, your album is something that I think is overdue, because I think back in the day when Very like overdue. DJ Clue was dropping the professional and like you, I mean Timbaland even you know, I mean obviously Tim, Tim, Tim was rapping Timbaland and Magoo. Oh my God, shout out to Magoo, fake ass Q Tip. I love him though. <laughs> when I was a kid, he was one of my favorite rappers. Um, but I feel like this is something that's way overdue, man. Like. Are you reconnecting with uh, any of the like, veterans, the vets, Hell yeah. the Fat Joes? I think, I mean, yeah, come on, man. It's going to be a multifaceted album and it's not just rap shit. It's going to be all different kinds of shit on there. What about a little country? No, little some country. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm about to Maybe. say. Yeah. But what, like, obviously you, when you did don't say nothing, I was, I remember as a kid seeing the article for, or, or the ad in double XL and it's saying produced by Scott Storch. I'm like, Oh shit. He's back with the, he's doing a roots record. Yeah. No, we were just, but I, I, I I'm wondering what would, what would have to happen like now? Like would, would that be something where you'd be like, yo, I need to like, it's my debut album. I need to bring thought and quest in to do a record. Like it's already, going down. It's already happening. I've talked to black thought maybe a month ago about it. By the way, Black Thought's one of the unique. greatest rappers of all like, time. I want to make a record like with Black Thought and like J. Cole. Crazy. Like, do something crazy with Quest Love on the drums. Bruh. Like shit like that. That's all I'm that sounds like a hip hop wet dream. Yeah. I told them, right? I told both of them. I told J. Cole and I told Quest. Damn. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yo, <coughs> you working with 6ix9ine, obviously prior to all this crazy shit going on, um, I remember seeing that video, You on the Keys. It was the Tory record. Yeah. By the way, Tory should have that 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 hook was crazy. Cra that. Crazy. He killed that. Was there a but was there any other records that, that we didn't we never heard that you guys did? Yeah. Do you, uh, there was like two more. Is there is that like Waka? Kika no uh Kika. No no no. I mean are there any records that are that we have that haven't come out that that, that are tough? No, 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 okay, okay. What is that like I wonder as a producer, because on the hip hop side of things, I feel like a lot of rappers just, are, I mean, he's kind of blackballing himself, but as a producer, you're kind of not necessarily, I don't know if you're held to the same standards. Like, would you, would you work with someone like him again, if it made sense? I, you know, I hate, I don't even want to answer this question because I know people are going to intentionally for what, no matter what I say, if I said I would, I will or won't, whatever, they're going to like, you know, just talk about it. But I'll just say this, you know, I don't turn my back on anybody in life. That's it. You know what I mean? I mean, you've been you've been in some low places, man. Yeah, I've been in some low places. You know, human beings can work through shit together. You know what I mean? That's you know? Hey, that's some real shit, man. That's some real shit. Yo, is there ever a, a beat of yours that uh, you wish, uh, like, that, that came out that, like, maybe it was a record that you were like, you know what? It wasn't worth the bag. Yeah, those have happened. Let's not even address those. Can we? You, we have any examples at all? Just one? Can you give us one? I don't know. There's some bad ones. There had to be a record that dropped that you were like, "Yo, 
damn. Like, maybe it's somebody who's not around anymore. Not, I mean, obviously, maybe they're just, you know, I, I can, I, I don't want to, you know, I can't, I, I don't want to offend anybody with that, but yeah, there's been some records that were whack. Let me go through. I, I, you know what? More than there being records that were whack, there's records that sometimes I remember Jay Z telling me that record went to the wrong person. He sat me down. He was like, he was like "You should have gave this record to that person. You should have gave that record to this." Person. Well, give us that example. I can't. You don't remember? Fuck, I remember. Yo, that's real because a lot of it is uh, is fit, right? It's like, damn. Can you imagine if I always remember? I don't know if you watched the uh, the, the Jay Z documentary where Timbaland's playing him beats, and he and Timbal yeah, Timbaland that. plays him the potion. Said, no, that's that bounce. And then Luda ended up with the potion, and Jay Z passed on it. Yeah. And it was like, oh, that shit happens all the time. And Jay would have got on that shit. Or you know, like you maybe you had one artist who's here, and then there's another artist that's your favorite artist, and it's a huge artist, and the one artist came to see you, and you were playing beats, and then they ended up getting that, and you're like. You didn't realize that next week you were meeting with this fucking massive artist, and you're like, "Fuck!" But you, like, you can't. I'm not grimy like that. I don't. I know a lot of stories where people will take the shit. They'll to be back. like, "Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, I need that beat back." Yeah. Like Jay Z. Like, oh yeah, it. this one already took it. Whatever. I've never done that. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a guess. Let, let me get a guess on on a whack beat or a, a beat a song of yours that you weren't a fan of. Let me just get a guess. Let's go with uh, Brooke Hodgins about us. Come on, man. <laughs> I see where this interview is going. <laughs> Shout out to Brooke Hogan, man. Yo, can I tell you a secret? Yeah. I mean, we're kind of being filmed right now, so go ahead. I'll tell you a secret from the camera. The motherfucker got big bag for that record. Big bag? Big bag. Now, was the Brooke Hogan, was that, like, was that, was that, house, was that, that Hulk Hogan money? Huh? Nah. Or was that from her label? That was from her label. That's crazy. That was. Did you like Sobe chop Records it up? Money. Did you chop it up with Hulk? Like, yeah, I thought, yeah, me and Hulk were cool. That's crazy, the Hulkster. The Hulkster. I'm, all right, yo, it's it, it's it's interesting because like, yo, you did Shutterbug. <laughs> Shut up! That was such a great fucking album, man. Uh, you know what's interesting about that song? That's the only record that I'm proud of at all <clears throat> that I made as a complete fucking junkie. Because it was in that era, right? Yes. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm looking I'm looking at the records during that time and I'm like and I remember that's the one that sticks the conversation, out. conversation, I remember Big Boy, he was like, man, people warned me. They were like telling me when he was in the studio and he's like, yeah, you know, you know, you're not so good right now and da, 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 da. He's like, but the shit's fly. I'm like, he's like, I like this record. I'm like, cool. I'm, I was fucking sweating profusely going to the bathroom to fucking do coke and shit like fucked up, but that record did his thing. Outside of, I don't know how. Outside of the million dollar commercial, do you remember the beat that you got paid the most for by a label? That record. <laughs> Brooke Hogan? No, no, the um the um the and one. No, no, I mean outside of that oh, cuz that was a commercial. Of... So like the Brooke Hogan one was pretty close to that. <laughs> But I'm saying, like, do you remember, like, yo, the most? I mean, you got in your head, be like, yo, I remember the biggest bag I got for a beat in my, like, what, what? Do you remember what record that was? No, nah, the real. I mean, those bags are cool. The big bags come when they motherfucking go. Right, because when then the you, record goes, that's when the real bag comes. It's crazy, cause like I, I, when when you did the battle, I was like, damn, I forgot. Like you, like launched Chris Brown, bro. Like you had his first single. Like that. Nobody knows that artists are going to be where they end up going, right? And Chris Brown at that time is, was 16 years old? He was just turning 16. Just turning 16 years old. And you're the one of the biggest producers in the world at the time. Like, what did, did you see that in him, like, early? Or was it just, like, for you, just, like, another placement? Like, yeah. Nah, man. Like, I made him a promise. The day I met him, I was like, yo, I'm making you a number one song right now. And like, I just had a feeling like he just seemed like, uh, for his time, the new Michael Jackson. Like, kid was dancing, had a crazy ass voice at that age. And I could tell his whole personality, his whole style and everything. I knew he was gonna go. And especially since the people that brought him there 
one of them was Mark Pitts, you know, who right. I discovered like, you know, Biggie and shit like that, <laughs> you know. Um, you and Dre's relationship, how is it today? Great. Has he like, 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 like? I sent him my single. He liked it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I had to get approval from the Godfather. Did you like like acknowledge like yo man I'm like proud of you Scott because I feel like we all should be like he shows a, mad love. A fans of hip hop like man love. like your yeah. comeback story is crazy bro, yeah. Yeah. and it's just getting started. I'm, I'm, yeah man, you know I'm, I'm but I'm glad that I'm evolving into a guy that is making his own records and not just being like a you know a, a beat slut. Like I'm making my own albums and my own records, movies. When you say a beat slut, that what do you what are you saying? Like somebody who just sells beats to everybody, and that's you know it is cool. But when you're making big records, like, and you're taking the time to put in the work and be a DJ Khaled, and go through, you know, it's fucking hell trying to get clearances and getting vocals and the vocals is in the vocals. Yeah, that shit is a, yo. Listen, listen, I'm he, one record deep, and I'm like. Damn. No, respect to Khaled because yeah, having to respect. deal with everyone's teams. I mean, that's it's it's low key like it's a lot because I, I put out a project before and it was like it was a lot, man. It's a lot, it's a lot dude. Um, have you been coming from your background and being as musical as you are? And like you said, you kind of had to relearn where music is now. And I've seen you in the studio, even if stuff doesn't end up dropping, I've seen you in the studio with so many of these young kids from this young generation. And I feel like sometimes I'll see you in the studio with certain artists and I'll be like, man, that, I don't know if that kid deserves to be in the studio with Scott Storch. Just because like artistically, I think a lot of the, uh, there's a lot of, a lot of the shit that's coming out in the last couple of years has just kind of been whatever. Yeah, I mean, I have to experiment sometimes. I I have to like take a closer look at the artist and see if it can work or not. And sometimes it does. Is there ever a time where you're like, "Man, I just I just can't do this. Like this is just not." Yes, that's happened. That's happened and with with the new guys. Yeah, hundred percent. Who's like somebody? All right, I'm gonna tell you one of the things that's crazy to me. Yeah, like there's, a, you know, people rapping. You know, I'm not talking about stylistically, but on beat. Okay, if some it's really I mean, it, a lot of people like it and have grown accustomed to rap completely off beat. I like it slightly off beat when it's completely not even remotely anywhere near the beat. It fucking bothers ladies and gentlemen, me. things have gone blue face. <laughs> it bothers the fuck out of me when I'm in the studio. That's the only thing. And then I'll just get a headache and I'll be like, Yo, I'll be right back. Like, yeah, what and is? I might not come back. <laughs> Who are uh, some of the producers that um, inspire you now? There's a whole wave of, of young guys that are... I mean, Murder Beats is incredible. I mean, there's a lot of cats out there. You know, I mean, Vinyls. And, vinyls is fire. Yeah. Doesn't get... It, vinyls don't have like... Hip a, yeah, Hip Boy's incredible. Uh, like, I also feel like, too, like, with, with where music is, too, like, the EDM shit is kind of its own thing. You know, like, is that something that, like, you can see yourself, like, doing an EDM record on your album or working with someone like Marshmallow or... Yeah, I mean, a lot of, EDM isn't EDM anymore. It's definitely just pop music. Yeah, it's pop music. Like, you listen to the Chainsmokers, you're like, this is 100 BPMs. Yeah, there's EDM producers that are working on, like you said, like Marshmallow. Or Got Roddy Rich on his single. Making, yeah, like straight regular shit. They're making rap shit. Yeah. It they is. Yeah. <laughs> um, craziest house party you ever threw? Crazy was back in like 1967. No, I'm just kidding. I don't fucking remember. I don't know. It was a lot of crazy shit in that generation. In that era. What about waking up the next day? What's the biggest thing you would like, like? Like, like, I always feel like we all have those nights where it's like, damn, did this shit even happen? Like, I don't like. Bro, I don't even remember how I would get there sometimes, but I would wake up. In the middle of the ocean on my yacht. Not knowing how you got there. Ten ass naked girls and just wake up and deliver. A ten like, piece. Yeah, just all ass naked. all Not even in the bedrooms, mad bedrooms in the boat, but like on top of the boat, like out in the front, like just fucking like drinks spilled everywhere. <laughs> just not even remember. Like, I didn't even remember how I got on the boat. That shit is crazy. 
Yeah, we were doing some wild shit in them days. And then uh, you had a, a interesting era where you you and you and little Kim were kind of a, a thing. We were cool. You guys were like cool. Yeah. Like, I feel like you guys were like one of the early hip hop power power situations that were rumored. Man, that was a very brief moment, but our friendship was very like long. Like we literally not, didn't really like. We weren't together like that. We were cool, but we were more like enjoy each other's company as like more of a brotherly sisterly thing. Because when you I can't you, you it. it wasn't really a physical connection like that. It, like it was more like a, a friendship vibe. You know were you mean? which I it. which album did you? Because she had a, she had that two two album run in that era where it was like Nato- Notorious K.I.M. and then La Bella Mafia was yeah. Lighters Up, right? Or was that? Yeah, that was a great album. I remember when you played that shit in that battle. I was like, I f- man, I forgot. What song do you wish you would have played during the battle that you'd like? Man, there's a lot of them. I, 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 there was maybe a couple of choices that I had influence around me that was like, you should play this. I don't know, but Is there one that you left out that were like, fuck, this one? It was like kind of the obvious one that could have got played. Yeah, there's probably some. I, I can't think of it now. Well, the album hopefully will be getting soon. You say you got five or six records. Yeah. The, that you feel good the, about, the, that are album quality. Oh, that are like, you know, heat rock. That these are going on. Yeah, I got a gang of records that are like cool. That might need to be touched up. Yeah, I mean, I, unless it's something real special, it's not gonna. Yeah. I don't know. Who who can you tell us who else is for sure making the album? No. Okay. <laughs> Have I you? Know. You know, it's funny because I remember uh, one art one 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 artist who I want to hear you with who I, I got to <coughs> actually introduce you to was uh, <coughs> the baby. Did you guys ever end up getting together? And creating after that, well, I think it was during the Grammys, right? It was like Grammy week. Bro, I don't know how, but I somehow spaced ever sending him a pack. And I want to work with him. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to make it. And like, I would just be collecting joints. And I was always waiting for one more to come that was better to send. And I just ended up missing the fucking boat. But I'm going to catch him on the next one. Yeah, like when you, it's crazy that you're like, yo, like, Storch is sending out packs. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I won't do that for anybody. Like, I bet, yeah. But an artist like him, I like. I'm, you know, a huge fan of him and Little Baby. Like both fire. Both people that I'll send a pack to. Yeah, like, like two of the illest guys right now to me. Who Who else do you like as a fan? Lyrically, coming from a guy who started out with fucking one of the greatest rappers of all time as the vocalist of your group, Shy Black Thought. Who like lyrically right now? Do you respect like on some bar shit like Drake? He's, I think of he's course. Dope. I mean, you know, he's just consistent and always, you know, I, you know, it's aesthetically pleasing to the ear. Um, you know, the Griselda dudes are shout out. To, have you have you got to work with him yet? No, I'm supposed to get with Benny. Listen, the we got to get the Benny the Butcher, yeah, yeah. the West Side. Shout out to Conway. Shout out to that whole crew. Yeah. You know, an album that you should check out. I think you'll appreciate is. Mad Lib and Freddie Gibbs put an album out last year that was Fire. amazing. Like, did you ever, because coming up in that era, like when you were hot, like there was this other world where it was like Mad Lib and Black Milk and all these like yeah, it's the underground. super grimy ass yeah, rap producers. Yeah. Did you like ever like tap in with any of that type of shit or were you just kind of in your own world? Because you kind of came from that world too, Loki. Yeah, yeah. What about Jay Dilla? Jay Dilla is amazing. Like, did you ever link? Like, did you and him ever have any time where you guys crossed paths? No, but he influenced a record that you know I, I totally was like reaching for that style when he was active. You know, God rest his soul. But um, there was a record I did called "Nothing New" on the Roots uh, "Things Fall Apart" album. Mm-hmm. I'm like aware. An homage. An homage to Dilla. Homage to Dilla. Yeah. Where's the uh? Where wh- where is your first Grammy right now? My first Grammy. Yeah, the the Roots Grammy. Where's that at? Do you still? Man, they didn't give us no trophy. Really? We got the certificate. Damn. We got the certificate. You know. That shit is crazy. That's disappointing, man. I want to. I, wa- I got eight certificates. Anybody who's watching this, man, like, who's been through some addiction or might be going through some addiction right now, obviously, besides pulling up to the Heavenly Center, June first or July first? July first. July first. You got to come down there and speak, man. I'm coming, man. I mean, yeah, I, listen, trust Good me. For the soul. I've been through a lot of drug addiction shit in my life. Not personally. You Around know, you. My family, yeah. Um, so you know what but what is, um, 
I always would always like what I've learned from experiencing it is like you can't it's frustrating dealing with somebody who's addicted to some shit because you you just want them to listen to you and to just get clean but like it's really I know it's so cliche but I feel like I mean you could tell me if I'm wrong it's like yo you it's 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 up to you. Like when you're ready, you have to want. You have to want to get clean. You, you can't want to get, clean. get caught getting high in the bathroom. And now, are you ready? Like it doesn't have to be a person who's like, oh yeah, I'm ready to get clean right now. They have to just all they have to do is want to. Do you think people have to hit rock bottom first? Yeah, I mean sometimes, uh, you know, some people might get a scare, something that like just leads them to it and. What was what was your rock bottom? Do you remember that moment where it was like, man, it's it's. I remember because I remember was, times when I lived in Vegas and Molly Mo would be like, "Yo, Scott Storch is staying in my crib right now." Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this was when I when what 2010, 2011, back yeah. in the day. But like, do you remember your moment when it was like the last time? You know what I'm saying? I mean, there was a lot of those moments. <laughs> I can imagine. There was a lot of like dark moments but you know what i mean by the uh, good grace of god i got through it your wife marijuana yeah shout out to steve lobel but first and foremost i was ready to, to give it up i knew it was either for me death or jail or something was gonna go down you know what i mean it was like you never did you never do like get locked up during that whole shit or or was there times where you did, did some overnight shit in jail or I got arrested one time. I got arrested one time in Vegas. That had to be I a was great with Suge Knight. That had to be a great terrible night. I was with Suge and you know he wasn't taking part with me on any of that shit but I got caught in a hotel room with, with cocaine. Like not a lot like only, right. like crumbs of it and I got arrested. That's some wild shit to get arrested for in Vegas. Yeah. It's like, what do you think people... Like, we're in Vegas, motherfucker. Like, <laughs> like what do you think I'm doing in my hotel room? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and then any advice you would give to... Uh, you know, I, I manage a couple of producers, and I feel like the production... Coming up as a producer nowadays, I feel like is... It probably was always harder. Um, but I just feel like with the uh, technology that's available... It's much easier to to get into producing. I'm not saying it's easier to get good at it, but same way with DJing. Like back in the day, you used to have to buy turntables and records, and it was a lot. Now you just get a little fucking toy and yeah. your app. Like, but for for producers who, you know, like want to try to break through, like what is some advice you would give to them? Because I feel like there, it's, it, it's 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 a lot of it is luck. For a producer, yeah, for a producer, someone who's find an artist to produce. And get them a record deal, and release an album with them. You know, that's, that's it. Hey, I have an artist. Yeah, I mean, look at the babies do ju justice. Like, because one of those that goes is gonna be worth fifty, a hundred fucking placements. That's crazy. Are you currently grooming any artist under 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 Scott Storchers? I mean, we intend to at some point, but I'm trying to groom myself as the artist with future. Different things, you know? totally, totally different. So. Yeah, I think you know the music I want to hear. Shout out to my guy Doobie. I heard you got you and Doobie did a little, uh, yeah, yeah. a little, uh, I don't know, an EP or something. Huh? Are you? Yeah, we did yeah. Things. shout out to Doobie, man. Uh, can I smoke a cigarette while I'm doing Go that? ahead. We what got cigarettes. In my bag? I do in my bag. This guy's got this guy Casey is the cigarette god. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All, this guy's a walking fucking cigarette. That's all he fucking does is smoke. God bless him. I love him. We too. We too, yeah. yeah get, uh, oh, you want to smoke? Yeah, the edge is, yeah. I'll smoke. You know, just, yeah. you know, obviously, I'd love to smoke. Just, you know, for the radio, you know, so you can get Atlantic Records. Your, your new single's out right now. The name of the song. Yeah, is you'll see at the end of this, we're going to do, <coughs> you'll see at the end of this, we're going to do a two-minute radio joint okay. it'll be like yo what's up? I, wanna, I wanna get some of it on my, my phone I wanna send it to the president you know Ooh, Mr. Weaver Mr. Weaver oh uh, man alright we good let's good. light up that goddamn that cigarette bro, bro. let's get to it oh, yeah. 
Yo, you and R. Kelly working together. What was that session like? That session was another one of those situations where a record didn't go where it was supposed to go. Should have went to someone else. No, watch this. I forget the name of the goddamn group. I don't remember the name of the group. But do you remember who I they were signed to? Beat to some group for something for like like eighty racks. Do you remember who they were signed to? I don't remember that either. All right. So I can find out this information. I'm gonna talk to my 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 ex manager back in the day, my boy Derek. Um, but I I I sold him the beat, and they wanted to get an R Kelly feature, and they got an R Kelly feature, and then R Kelly said, "Hold up, I want this. I want this, and I don't. You guys are not getting on it." So he paid them the, to get off. To get off. Damn. And, and he got plays only. And then we threw the game on there. Mm hmm. Game was new. Hey man. That's crazy. So you weren't even in the session with Kels. Nah. It was something that like I met him the people the who short, bought the I beat. I met him at the Shore Club in Miami one time on like New Year's. Like it was he was there. I was seeing. I was like, oh shit. Is that listen? He, you know, it is what it is. Well, I was gonna say, is I, that I, I'm not talking about him on a social level at all. But on, on a, a social on level, a, on a musical level, he's a genius. On a fucking music one of the greatest level. artists ever. That dude is the one. I would have loved to seen a motherfucking versus battle with oh, R. Kelly. R. Kelly and Usher. And nobody stand. No, fucking he destroyed that. No, he destroy everyone. He destroy everybody. I, I I agree one hundred percent. Unfortunately, like you said, it's like I think that at the I'm end of the day, you're allowed. Well, you know, you're allowed to. I think you're allowed to separate art from the person, man. If that makes sense, you know, like shit. I love R. Kelly. His music. I don't love him. I mean, I don't know that motherfucker, but his music was just like, yeah, bro, legendary. 12 play, bro. Like, whew. Songs that make your hair stand up. Like, Man, 100%, bro. Yo, you working, uh, you working with 50 Cent on the Massacre. Massacre, I always feel like doesn't get his just due for how fucking incredible that album was. I think that Get Rich or Die Trying had such high you know, expectations. It was almost impossible to follow it up. But... I mean, I think it was a matter of, like, just like anything else, the evolution of what, you know, what he was doing, like... But talk about, like, you and 50's chemistry, because there was some chemistry there. Hell yeah. I mean, you guys made some um, classic music, and yeah, that was... There was a comfort zone. <laughs> there was a comfort zone with him, and I'm going to tell you one of the first reasons why is... You know, Dre had me in his studio, and he seen me in Dre's studio, so there was a comfort zone. Like, you know, there's a certain quality in a bar set by Dre, and I wouldn't be in there if I wasn't supposed to be in there. So he had, he was comfortable with me and my opinion of music and what I would submit. Because you, he knew you wouldn't be there if. Yeah, so he knew my like, my vision is cool. You know what I mean, like. People always second guess, especially in that time, because it's not like now where everything, I mean, I'm not trying to fucking shit on shit, but there's a lot of shit that sounds like a lot the same. Oh, everything is the same drum pattern. Listen, Like, fam. we were making every song was its own thing. Are you art artistically frustrated when you hear some of this shit? Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we all fucking lock into the trap bubble and right. fucking the new drum sounds and this and that, but, bro, I was fucking putting up kicks like... Crazy shit Like if you listen to Like the lean back drums Like, like Where were you getting Your drums from Cause I always oh. Did you Cause I remember uh, Kanye said That he He would steal drums From a lot of Dr. Dre shit Listen We would Yeah and then he would Flip them and do them Filter them and, So and would you that. would Did you ever take any drums From Dre Or did he ever Man, give you he, Any he drums He gave me a shitload of drums I got drums from Timberland I got Are those drums You still lose Use to this day No No no, um, I had a zip disc at that time where was, we were using the zip disc with our, our MPs, you know, the MP3000 or the MP2000. Yep, yep, yep. And the motherfucking disc I had with all that shit on there was gone. I could get it again, but, you know, I'm sure certain ones are still very essential, but, you know, the sonics have changed. And... Did you um, work on any iteration of Detox at all? 
or was that kind of the era in which you and Dre weren't close anymore? We had we've had moments in, in, in working, you know, at some point in the past. Because I know there's like a million iterations of there's that album. Vaults. You know, I don't think he ever was working specifically on like he would make music and if something really he gravitated towards it then I'm sure he probably would have wanted to keep it for that or for whatever but you know that's why do you think you and Jay-Z never had a real moment if that makes sense the way Jay had his moments with Primo and had his moments with Timberland like why do you think Jay-Z and the Scott Storch train never I feel like there were certain loyalties that were established to him and other producers that, you know, I was not part of, and they earned that. And they, from growing with him from the beginning, and and you know, was that is that like a thing? Like, because if, if you think of like, who do we think of? Ho like when we think of Hope, we think of Primo, Timbaland, then later on, Just Blaze, Kanye. Like, so that and was Swiss. like a. And Swizz, oh my God, him and Swizz, yeah, he was on the Rough Riders. I'm, but like, for real, back then that that was a thing. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, he, there was a certain. It definitely happened with the Neptunes. I feel like at some like with a lot of artists, you would be like, oh, yeah, the Neptunes are always going to be on a certain solo album. But like, yeah. who did did you have that with anybody? That, I mean, I had that. I had that with Fat Joe. You know, we we made we kept you know every time we would do something. Um, you know, certain people. Hey, man, let me tell you something. Hey, I don't remember a song ever being bigger than Lean Back when I was a kid during that summer. That shit was... I heard it was going crazy. Yeah. I wasn't there at Summer Jam in New York. It was a problem. Yo, that and that beat. Like, yo, man, what... Like, I think that if you just take away the lyrics... That's one thing, too, about these beat battles that's frustrating... Cause I'd be like, yo, man, who can really just play beats and be like, oh shit, that's one of them beats. You stand up. <laughs> oh my yeah. god, what do you think is your hardest beat? Like, what's your beat that like? That's probably one of them. You know, make it rain was a good one. Um, just as a beat, I mean, there's a lot of them that are just, you know, exhibit X. Oh man. <coughs> That was his first single on uh, off of Restless, right? Mm -hmm. Very amazing album. Shout out to the Exhibit. Oh, look, Scott, man, you're a fucking legend. Hopefully we'll get the album before 2021. For sure. Are you going to be doing... I know for a while there I would see you, like, going to play in the Keys live at places and shit. You know what? I'm I feel like you could have a Vegas residency. I'm definitely, especially after going through... Being uh, you know socially distanced and just at the house so much, I'm kind of inspired to go and you know hit the do, road. Yeah, well not hit the road, but do some specific dates and some specific places. Like fucking Coachella. I saw like when you came out and, with Russ, that shit was amazing. And, and you know support the record and and you know just catch that wave for a second. Yeah, man. Listen, oh, I, I I remember what what show did he come out with Russ? It was out here, Staples Center. Dog, that shit is crazy. That was a vibe, man. Shout out to Russ. Yeah, I'm sure you guys got. Rocks together too. I'm sure you guys got more music coming. We do. I mean, we just put one out. <laughs> Which record? It's Ty Dollar. The 3 a.m. Yeah. Oh, that's you. Yeah. Fire. Hey, shout out to Abaddon too. We shout out Abaddon. Yeah, yeah. Abaddon is uh, a, a. I just left him at the studio. He's still a wonderful there. man from the Netherlands. Is that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Shout out. Shout out to the Netherlands and. uh Shout out to you, man. Appreciate you for coming through. Thank you, brother. I can't wait to hear the fucking album. 